These are the five best signings of the summer so far. Number one, Kim and Jay. Kim and Jay went to Bayern for a reported 50 million euro release clause. Playing one season in Italy for Napoli, 26 years old, 6 foot 2. The way that this man has developed in just within three years ago, he was playing in China. Season in Turkey, season in Napoli, and now he is at Bayern Munich. But pretty much he will be partnering with Tesla Lack in the central defence. Partnership, which for the next five, six, seven years to come, he is going to be an absolute dominant footballer. We've seen the way that Bayern Munich has developed players physically and football wise. Kim and Jay will not be one of the ones to fall away from that. During his time in Napoli, we've seen him basically become one of the best centre backs in the world as of right now. He's got so much room to improve. Was rumoured to be going to Manchester United in the summer. Just a few weeks ago, maybe about a month ago, but United never made a bid. Bayern Munich came in as soon as they were very much selling Lucas Hernandez to PSG for 45 million euros, spent the extra 5 million to sign Kim and Jay from Napoli, which it's a very big improvement. Hernandez probably is more of a left back, while Kim and Jay is an out and out centre back. The way that Min has been this season for Napoli, not just in the Serie A, not just in the Champions League, but just for the club as a whole, you've seen the defence lift along with everyone else this season. Obviously, Napoli won the Scudetto after, I think it was 33 years it was, of an absence. Pretty much, you've seen everyone lift this season. Fresh in the season, I think about 18 points clear. At top of the link, Kim and Jay's been one of the main reasons for that. He has been a monster in that defence, but dominating not just in Europe but in the league, in the cups. You've seen the difference with him to without him. It'll be different to see what Napoli do this season, to see how they basically replace him if they can. It'll be a hard task for just fifty million euro, but I thought I think they paid about eighteen for him, so it's like. You paid him for a season, you've made more than double your money, nearly three times the level that you paid for him. You've got a good amount of money to reinvest. I think Kim and Jay will pretty much be one of these defenders where he'll either see his career out of Bayern, or he moves on to maybe like a Real Madrid, or he comes into the Premier League about 31 32. I don't think he'll leave Germany until he's 30 at the bare minimum. Player number two is Christopher Nkunku. Nkunku cost Chelsea a reported 6 million euro release clause also. He's 25 year old, goal scorer for Leipzig, I think maybe not top goal scorer of the last few seasons, but has been within the top 2 or 3. He has been able to create from deep, create from up high, out wide, you name it, he creates. 5 foot 10, he's a goal scorer, he can play as a number 8, he can play as a number 10, out wide, falls 9. Which is not a traditional number nine, as what Chelsea fans would want. But the way that Pochettino plays, obviously having Harry Kane at Spurs, having Mbappe or Messi through the middle of PSG, it has been a very good increase in development. I think Nkunku will suit Pochettino's system very well. He's got the good start pre season, but that's nothing to go off of. And Kunku is pretty much one of those where he will be a false nine or drop into number 10 to allow Jackson to play further forward in games. But the way Kunku is, he's hard to defend, he'll run the channels, he'll drop deep to pick it up, he can play with both feet. 5 foot 10, so he's not like 6 foot 4, he's agile, he's slick with it, he can just pretty much play as he's just rolling defenders, rolling midfielders. It's going to be hard to stop him, unless he cannot s settle in to the system, or even just the league. Which we've seen, Timo Werner, coming from Leipzig, just I think it was three years ago, or four years ago, and he just couldn't. He was scoring goals, but chance after chance he was missing. He was struggling, he would pretty much hit about six shots into his head before he would score a goal. And Kunku is different, he's not as rapid as Werner. But he's definitely a bit uh, on the ball technically, as shoot than Timo was. 
I think Nkunku will do very well at Chelsea. I think for the 60 million, this was agreed. I think it was under Thomas Tuchel. They've obviously defied Graham Potter. Solari, I think his name is. Bruno Solari, whatever it is exactly. Frank Lampard and now Pochettino. So Nkunku could have had like four different managers. But now he comes in with the Argentinian coach. Which let's say they get on this season. They'll probably need to add at least another two midfielders. And probably at least another central defender if Chelsea want to get back into the Champions League this season. But as of right now, they've not signed anyone like that. It's just what I've seen as of the 25th of July. Number three is on to Onana. Onana cost Manchester United 55 million euros overall, 51 up front, plus 4 million in add ons. He's 27, he's 6 foot 2. He pretty much, as soon as Ten Hag wanted the hair gone, he knew that obviously Onana was available to allow the shift from David to Andre. And it's going to be, hopefully, the right decision. Because after 12 years at United, the hair, unfortunately, was shipped out probably quite disrespectfully. I agreed the deal before he went off on his holidays, before he went to get married, to go on his honeymoon. It's now pulled it out from under him by the manager, pretty much saying, we know our nana's available, no longer want you, basically. Great servant to the club, he has said that. Hopefully he does get a proper send-off, because he does deserve it. 12 years at a football club, there is 554 appearances, the most as a goalkeeper, the most clean sheets for Manchester United. Just won the Golden Glove in the Premier League with 18. But moving on to Anana now, is pretty much that next step in Eric Ten Hag's system he was to play with United. See how the start season under the hair, couldn't play out. He had multiple mishaps, multiple errors. Now he goes to a goalkeeper that he can fairly trust. There's also links with Diogo Costa of Porto, but that reportedly cost 75 million euro release clause. Compared to Inter, it's 20 million cheaper, and you can pay it off over a couple of years. Compared to the release clause, you'd have to pay that one lump sum unless you can get an agreement, which would be unlikely for a club like Porto. But for Anana, he's a, obviously he's played with Ten Hag before at Ajax, for I think it was the four years he was there. Cam composed. You've seen him in the Champions League final for Inter, in the Champions League this season for Inter. He's only played one season in Italy. A couple of games in the Serie A have watched him, while also the Champions League. He's commanding in the box. He isn't afraid of just doing anything, really. You play the ball back to him, you know you're fine. You can start counters from a goal kick, play it into the channel, anything. Could play both feet, thankfully. Compared to obviously what the hair has been, basically is very one footed. And Anna brings a different level of presence in between the sticks when you've got Rafael Varan and Lissandro Martinez playing in front of him. You'll have a good ball playing trio there. Basically, that will allow the fullbacks to go on and they further drop deep and basically allow United to play a higher line and that kind of more. High tempo, quick pace, quicker than tra transition, more deadly basically, allow United to be a more feared opponent throughout Europe and the Premier League. Number four is Lewis Appenda. Appenda has just left RC Lens after a single season, scoring 21 goals in the league for a reported 43 million euro. He's 23 year old, 5 foot 8, not the tallest, he's quick, he's direct. He's pretty much played, obviously, the start of his career in Belgium. Good goal scorer this season. Moves to RB Leipzig to replace Nkunku. Which, pretty much, I don't know how much they paid up front for Appenda. But they've always made 17 million profit, transfer fee-wise, to the shift. And then whatever they'll pay up front. He's deadly in the box. Pretty much, if you put him and Timo Werner up front next season... It's going to be a very good partnership. Him with Poi Danny Olmo in behind. If Olmo can up his output, you're going to see Werner and Openda be right up there with the best partnership 
strike force wise in Europe probably next season at the very least. I would say Openda could probably be moving to the Premier League hopefully within the next I would say probably three seasons. I think it would be coming towards his prime he would end up being more likely to go into it. Now who they end up going to? Maybe an Arsenal, maybe Manchester United if United want that more smaller striker that's just quick, rapid and gung-ho go for it on the counter. I don't know about Chelsea, I don't think so after Nkunku. Maybe they do for the next option. Maybe for Man City, when the Ellen Haaland will probably eventually leave. Liverpool, I don't think so because I think Nunes will hit the ground running this season. I think this season was pretty much a settling period for him. And Spurs, unless Harry Kane leaves this summer, well, for next summer or this, for the next five weeks of the window. I think Appenda is probably going to go to either, say, a Newcastle, Manchester United or even an Arsenal. who are probably certain the best. Just with the style of play that the clubs are playing now. And with them, well, United and Arsenal pretty much. I know you've got his as at Arsenal, but you need a good striker for the long term. Which I think Appenda is. Leaving Lens, which pretty much he's left, I think, as the qualifiers of the Champions League for guaranteed Champions League football. They lost Sikh Fafana also. He's went to Saudi Arabia with Al Nasser. They've got a lot of money. I think that was about 30 million for Fafana. 73 million. You've got to reinvest in the two positions. Ben has done well for the club. Fire them into Europe. They'll, if they make the Champions League group stages, they'll make pretty much what they sold up in the four plus some so ultimately with him moving to Leipzig if the season he could pretty much have almost made the club 80 million if they can get through to the groups of the Champions League the last player of the five I've went with James Madison now you may be questioning why I've put a player that got be allocated from Leicester last season and down sign for Spurs reported for 46.3 million euros is pretty much the way I've seen for Leicester over the previous years he has been good, he's 26 years old, so you've got at least a 5-6 year contract out of him. He's small, he's a number 10, he can build it from deep whether he drops in to play the game as a number 8, or to pick it up just from a number 6 position. He can play off both feet, he can play off a striker, he can go out wide, create from out wide, which not a lot of number 10s can. As well as got to be within that, kind of, just off the striker, but not too deep with the carry action done. He's both fitter compared to a lot of other players, professionally, and as a, a number 10 in the Prem. He's good under pressure. Give him a set piece of, whether it's a free kick or penalty, he's going to pretty much, well, penalties you'd expect to be about a free kick, a corner, you're going to get a very good chance of scoring where he's directly shooting from the free kick and whether he's whipping it in from pace from the corner with Harry Kane in front of him if he can get human son and Kulosevsky firing next season he's got to be a defender behind him you'll have point Hoiberg and Busuma in the midfield you look for Spurs to improve that defence you've got a new goalkeeper you can see I don't know if Spurs would make Europe next season under the new manager Poster Coglu, which I've seen him first under Celtic, the football is good. It is Celtic, which you expect the league, you expect the treble and all that stuff. But the way he plays, after having Conte, Nuno, Jose Mourinho, since Pochettino left in 2019, you've had four years, or nearly four years, of just five in the back, park the bus, counter attacking football managers. Now you've got a manager that wants the quick, expansive transition football, which is still scared to go five at the back and hold a lead. Which pretty much his fullbacks on there, have an overload in the midfield, and his wingers get out wide and allow the players to create an overload in the midfield and just stick it in the box where you're going to have now Harry Kane, Madison himself, you have runners from deep, you have Sundell drifting from the left, Kulosevsky from the right. You're going to get a different spurs this season as long as he's given the financial backing 
and the time to allow him a system to kind of develop in the league. I will take time. Will he be given time? He's been given a four year deal. So his contract's going to be quite a lot of money, probably. Not compared to what Mourinho, Nuno, and Conti would have been on, but definitely would be on a good, hefty wage compared to his obviously Celtic contract. It's London wages, so it's probably going to be three, four times the salary, which financially you can't turn that down. But for Madison, going back to it, I think he suits what Boris Coglu wants. Now, Boris Coglu would usually play with a number six and two number eights. I don't think Madison could really play as a number eight consistently. Against the small teams, maybe Bournemouth, Forest, Wolves, and all that, Chef U, Burnley, Luton Town, all that, you could definitely play a bit deeper. But against your Uniteds, your Cities, your Arsenals, your pretty much top six, seven from last season, you'll need to play for the forward to try and have that outlook, that output, to allow Spurs to be deadly from the count of which. For the level of money they paid for him, I think it's on a four or five year contract, you're pretty much going to be getting a very good midfielder, number 10 creative player, as long as you can get back to it, which I think under Postacoglu, he definitely will do so. Now with that, that is the end of the video. If you did enjoy, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and with that, if you've made this far, leave down below in the comments a video suggestion for the next video. But with that, I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye.